Hi, welcome to Heroes Mark Homeschool Academy. My name is Mrs. Nita. Let's begin with a word of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this time we have to learn and grow. We seek to do the best we can and add to what we know. We love you, God, with all our hearts, and to others, love we show. Pleasing you is our goal. Now to our lesson, we shall go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome aboard. This is Lesson 31A. If you're following along with the curriculum, we also have this week's workbook, Lessons 31A and 31B can be found here, along with the weekly memory verse. Take care to commit this verse to memory. I believe that God will bless you tremendously because of that effort. Well, we will begin with our warm-up song. Are you ready to warm up? I know I'm ready. Here we go. We're going to stand up, get our bodies and limbs to moving. The song goes, if you're ready to learn, clap your hands. If you're ready to learn, clap your hands. If you're ready to learn, stamp your feet, bum bum. If you're ready to learn, if you're ready to learn, then come and sing with me. If you're ready to learn, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you're ready to learn, stamp your feet, boom. If you're ready to learn, if you're ready to learn, then come along with me. Yay! We are ready to learn. We're wrapped up. We are ready to go. Great, because we are introducing um, the consonant sounds review in this lesson. And in a few lessons, we'll be talking about uh, reviewing the consonant sounds. I just want to make sure that you're saying the sounds correctly and that you're able to complete the assignments in your workbook. Um, uh, we are currently on page six in uh, the workbook, and you can also take time to complete page five's exercise, the reading exercise. I trust that you can read that no problem by now. Um, so we want to review our consonant sounds. Do you remember what the five vowels are that we talked about in the previous lessons? A, E, I, O, U, good job, A-E-I-O-U. Those are the five vowels. We've talked about that for three weeks. We've been able to spend time talking about that. And we talked about the difference between a vowel and a consonant. The vowel, when you say its sound, A, E, I, O, U. You're constantly witnessing an, an open mouth configuration. You literally have to open your mouth to let the, the air pass through for the sound to be proper. And um, the difference between that and a consonant is that the consonant usually, mostly has a closed mouth sound. So for instance, the sound B says B, B, B. You say it and your, your mouth sort of stays in that position of being mostly closed. You notice that. And so uh, just as a review, just so you know the difference, when I'm saying consonant, I'm talking about the 21 letters of the English alphabet that mostly has that mouth position of closed compared with open. So what we're going to do is go through our consonant sounds review from the letters B through P. Notice we removed the vowels out of here. We just wanted the consonants. So we don't want A, we don't want E, we don't want I, and we don't want O, okay? We pulled those out because those are vowels. So let's practice our review, the sounds. Are you ready? We're going to start with B. Here we go. B, K, D, G, J, K, O, M, N, Good, let's try that again. B, K, D, G, H, J, K. Oh, M, N, P. Way to go, good job. I knew you knew it. I knew you knew it all along. Good work. So those are the sounds that you'll need to make sure you have committed to memory and have practiced 
uh, as much as you as much as you can so that you're very fluent with it. At this time, if you like, you may press pause on your device and complete exercise on page six. Great work. Well, I trust you've had time to do that. We also want to practice our handwriting. We've been writing um, numbers recently. We've written the numbers 0 through 11 to this point. Today, we're going to be writing the number 12. 12 is a combination of two numerals. The numbers 1 and 2 come together to form 12. 1 and 2, when you put them together, you get 12. And so we're going to practice writing the number here as well as the spelling of the number below it. Okay, are you ready? You can find this on page nine in your workbook. And let's begin. The number 12 comes with the number one, which we know is just the line down. And then the number two, upward curve, downward slant, and over 12. Okay, let's try this again. Number one, and the number two, upward curve, downward slant, and over. Twelve. Twelve. One more time. Down, upward curve, downward slant, and over. And that's how you get the number twelve. That's how you get the number twelve. Let's practice writing and spelling so that you can begin associating the letters with the numeral. Twa, that's T-W, twa, twa. Then E, L, V, E. 12, that's how you spell 12. T-W-E-L-V-E, -E, 12. Let's try again. T W E L V E 12. Good work. You may take time right now and complete the exercise on page nine if you need a few more moments. Great work. Well, I trust you had time to do that. We are now moving into our Bible history portion of the lesson. It's the time where we talk about the, our history, beginning with the biblical accounts. And we've talked about so many different characters. You can probably remember some of your favorites. There's David and Goliath. That's my daughter's favorite. There's Daniel and the lions. There's Abraham and Isaac, Jacob and Joseph, the patriarchs of faith. We've talked about Adam and Eve and the fall in the garden. We've had an opportunity to explore so many biblical stories. And as um, the purpose of that is so that we can learn about these characters. By learning about these characters, we can find out who pleased God and who displeased God so that we can benefit from that information and learn how to be better positioned to please God in our own lives. So that's the purpose of, of Bible stories. And that's the reason for any story, really. When we teach history in higher grade levels, when the timeline is beyond Bible history, maybe more recent history, you'll find that the reason we tell history stories is so that we can learn from our past. And we know that when we learn from what we've done, we can be better positioned to do better. And um, to either repeat things that we did well or to avoid things that didn't turn out so well. So history stories are for that purpose. And that's why history is so important. So what we're going to do now is get the book. We'll be reading about Joshua and the Great Wall. And the wall came a-tumbling down. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes, good. Let's get our book. And you may turn to page eight if you're following along in the workbook. Joshua and the Great Wall. 
God had an important job for Joshua. He wanted him to lead the people to the promised land. Joshua knew they had to go through Jericho, which had a high wall and all the way around it. On their way, an angel told Joshua that his army should march around the walled city once each day for six days. On the seventh day, the army should circle the city seven times. Then everyone should blow their horns and shout. Joshua and his army did as the angel said. On the seventh day, after circling Jericho seven times, everyone blew their horns as hard as they could and shouted loudly. Stone by stone, the walls crumbled and crashed to the ground. God helped the people so they could enter the promised land. Good, the end. That's the story of Joshua and the Great Wall. And it's a beautiful tale because it helps us to know that when we call out to God, he'll hear us and he'll give us instructions. And he'll tell us what to do. And he told Joshua through an angel what to do to get that wall to come down. And the instructions are sort of unique, but Joshua and the people of Israel obeyed. And when they obeyed the word of God, they got the result they were hoping for. So that's the moral of that story. If you like, you may pause your device at this time and complete the writing assignments on page eight. Good work. I trust you had time to do that. We are moving into our mathematics segment of the lesson. It's at a time where we appreciate numbers. Today, we're going to be skip counting again, but instead of skip counting by twos, we're going to be skip counting by fives. Yes, fives. And I think you'll enjoy this lesson. So I put this on the board for those who may not have the workbook, um, but if you have a workbook, it's there on page 13. Um, we have the number chart from the number one down to the number zero, 100. But what we're going to be doing is skip counting by fives. So I'm going to, with your help, go through and fill in all of the missing blanks. And if you like, you can fill in the missing blanks in your workbook. We can do it together. And as we're completing this little assignment, we're going to go back over it and we will say the numbers that we filled in out loud. And what we'll find is that the numbers that we're saying out loud are all counting by fives. Yes, it'll all be plus five. So let's get started. We see here that we have one, two, three, four. There's a missing number there. Do you know what number that is? That is the number five. Good job. We're missing the number five. And then we say we see six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, ten. Number ten. Okay, and so we see we'll just start with the threes and count up. Thirteen, fourteen. What number goes there? Fifteen. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And then we have eighteen, nineteen, twenty. This is the number twenty. And then we have 23, 24, 25. We'll complete that sequence. Good job. 25, 28, 29, 30. This number is 30. 33, 34, 35 goes here. 35, 38, 39, 40, this number is 40, good job, 40. 43, 44, 45, that's where we are, 45, good job. 48, 49, 50, 50, that number is 50. 53, 54, 50, 55, 
This number is 55. 58, 59, 60. What comes after 59? 60. Yeah. 60 comes after 59. 63, 64, 60. Five. This number is 65. Good job. Moving up to 68, we have 68, 69, 70, 70, 73, 74, 75. 75 goes here. Good work. 78, 79, 80. What comes after 79? 80. 80 comes after 79. 83, 84. What goes here? 85. Good job. 85. 88, 89, 90. This number is 90. Be sure to fill this in in your workbook if you have that with you. 93, 94, 95. This is 95. And finally, 98, 99, 100. We've made it to 100. Yay. So we counted to uh, 100 by fives, and we did that by filling in the numbers. But what we're going to do is go back over it and count by fives. And the numbers that we'll be counting are the numbers in blue, the numbers we've just completed, and the numbers that you've just completed. So let's do it together. Are you ready? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Good job. We're going to do that again. And um, we will do it again now. And we'll actually repeat this exercise even in the next lesson. I'm just so we're all on the same page with counting to fives. It's a little... Um, it's fun, but I want to make sure you understand the sequence. Okay, so we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Good, good work. Continue to practice that as much as you feel you need to until you're comfortable with the way it sounds coming out of your mouth. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Okay, so practice that, and I believe that you will get it in no time. Great work. If you need a few more moments to complete your charts, you may press pause on your device and complete it at this time. Great work. Well, welcome back. I'm glad you had time to do that. It is now our Make a Joyful Noise segment of the lesson. We like to stop and just honor God. Just think about God because he's so great. Um, our song of the week is, Oh, Be Careful, Little Eyes. Um, if you have the workbook, page 28 is where you'll find the lyrics to this song. Go ahead and grab your instrument, whatever instrument you may have. Um, any instrument at all, drums, piano, xylophone, I'll be using the handbell. And we're going to sing this song together. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. 
For the father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little tongue, what you say. Be careful, little tongue, what you say. For the father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little tongue, what you say. Be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little hands, what you do. For the father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little feet, where you go. Be careful, little feet, where you go. For the father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little feet, where you go. Be careful, little mind, what you think. Be careful, little mind, what you think. For the father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little mind, what you think. So be careful, little mind, what you think. That is a really good song. It helps us to remember that we want to protect our soul by protecting our eyes, our ears, and our mouth, and the members of our bodies that God has given us. Um, we want to be careful of what we put in front of our, our uh, these members and um, engage in godly activities like, you know, put your eyes on something that God wants, that you think God will be pleased with a good TV show or something like that. Speaking of eyes, if you turn to page 16 in our basic skills, we have our five senses. We we're talking about beginning in this lesson, five senses. Uh, we have five senses. And what is a sense? A sense is one of the mechanisms God has put in the human body by which to detect and explore the nature and creation that he's given us. Uh, one example of that is the sense of Sight, yes, sense of sight. We were just singing about be careful little eyes what you see. Um, the gift of sight, of the sense of sight, is the ability to observe your surroundings using your eyes. You can look around. You can see. What can you see? I see my walls. <laughs> A calendar, lamp, and a pot of uh, flowers. Now, try covering your eyes. You find that by covering your eyes, although you can still detect things in your environment, you can no longer use your eyes to do that. You have to use a different sense. The a uh, secondary sense is probably going to be your ears because if you can't see your environment, you probably can still hear. But it makes you very grateful for the sense of sight so that you can explore your world using both your sight and your hearing. Both are important. And God has given you both of them. Um, if you like at this time, you may press pause on your device and complete the sense of sight exercise found on page 16. Great work. Well, I trust you had time to do that. Um, we are at the end of another great lesson. A note to parents and caregivers. There's an arts and charts section in the back of the workbook. Um, this, the craft for this week is a transportation uh, hunt category for categorizing. Helps the student to learn to properly categorize uh, different modes of transportation. So um, I think you'll find that that's a really fun craft for them. Is it air, is it transportation for water, or is the mode of transportation 
for land, primarily for land. I think you'll find it. There are also some coloring sheets, as always, uh, for the student to color if they like coloring. Or perhaps you have a younger student or child there who just wants to take that part of the workbook for their own use. That's perfectly fine. We do not mind sharing. It is great. Okay, well, thank you for joining me on another wonderful adventure into lesson 31. Yes, 31A. But until next time, goodbye, goodbye. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye, and may God bless you. Goodbye, goodbye, I'll see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye, and may God bless you. Goodbye, little hero. I'll be your hero's body, and as you study with heroes born, I will be your friend.